Hey guys, it's JP, and today we are going to take a look at the running form of Lawrence Chirono. He is an elite long distance runner who has won multiple major marathons, even recently winning the 2019 Boston Marathon. He is also known for having unique characteristics when he runs. In this video, we will analyze his running form and take a look at different components of his running form as he runs the marathon. Now let's get into the analysis. The running clip we will be analyzing is when he ran his fastest marathon time during the 2018 Amsterdam Marathon. Here he breaks the course record with a time of 2 hours 4 minutes and 5 seconds. He averages a 444 min per mile pace which is crazy fast. Now let's take a look at general components of speed which are stride length and stride frequency. Based on a few calculations he presents with a step length of 1.77 meters. And in comparison to other elite marathon runners, this is pretty high and above average. However, what makes him stand out more is his step rate. In this clip, he presents with a step rate of 190 steps per minute. The average among elite marathon runners is basically 180 steps per minute, so he's getting 10 more steps in per minute, which really add up in a long distance race like the marathon. It is also good to note that this is around 3 fourths into the race, so it's even more amazing that he can maintain this kind of cadence at this point. Now, let's look at specific aspects of running form to understand a little more about what makes him so fast and efficient. In this clip, he presents with a bit of variation in foot landing. He lands around both the midfoot and the rear foot as he runs, however he mostly runs around the midfoot in this clip, and the tendency to land around the midfoot increases as he does his final kick toward the finish line. Contrary to popular belief, where runners believe they should land only one way as they run, whether it's rear foot, midfoot, or forefoot, I actually prefer some variation. If you really think about it, these different types of landing do cause slight biomechanical changes which end up stressing and relieving pressure from different areas of the leg. Slight variations, such as the case of Chirono, would help prevent certain muscles and joints from being overstressed instead of continuously stressing the same areas with the same foot landing. Next, we will look at foot landing relative to the center of mass. Even though he has a long stride, he does not really overstride at all, which is good as overstriding could cause increased stress on the ankle and knee joint and decrease efficiency as you run. Now we will move on to looking at leg movement as the foot first lands on the ground to when he pushes off the ground. I place markers here to see the range of that movement. The range itself looks pretty balanced with slightly more range toward the backside movement. He presents a good backside movement to the hips, indicating good power generation from the hips, resulting in his high step length without resorting to overstriding. Next, let's look at the amount of vertical movement that occurs as he runs. In a marathon, while vertical movement will always be present, there shouldn't be much bouncing going on. Too much of it can lead to increased vertical load, as well as decreased efficiency as more force would be directed upward than forward. Now we will take a look at the trunk. You can see that he maintains a slight forward tilt of the whole body. This slightly aids in improved momentum forward as well as altered position for improved push off from the hips. Even though he has this slight tilt, you can see he does a very good job of maintaining the trunk in line with the body. This may indicate good core control which will help stabilize the body during push off for optimal force output from the legs. Next we will move up to the arms, specifically shoulder movement. I place markers to see the range of this movement. Looking at the specific joint, he presents with appropriate amounts of mobility, however, what makes his arm swing unique is not really from the shoulders, but rather what is occurring at the elbows. Unlike other elite runners, he maintains the elbows much more bent, resulting in very high arm carriage as he runs. Now how does this impact his running form? Technically, keeping his arms bent like that does require more active strength from the biceps, however, the increased energy usage is pretty insignificant when looking at energy expenditure from the body as a whole. What this alteration of the arm swing does do is help with active mobility of the shoulders. You guys can try it for a second. Keep your elbow at a 90 degree angle and swing your shoulder back. Now bend your elbows all the way and swing your shoulders back. You can feel the difference. For Chirono, he may have limited shoulder mobility, so this unique arm swing may possibly help with the movement in this joint. However, I would have to do a more thorough assessment to find out. While I would not say that this technique is more superior than other types of arm swing, I would say that if you seem to have difficulty with moving the shoulders back and forth during running, this could be a technique you can experiment with. Having enough range in the shoulders is important as it helps counteract angular forces that are produced from the legs as they push off the ground, so you can maintain a straight path when running. Now let's look at the arm swing from a front view. 
This is probably the best footage that looks at the front of the body during the race. However, it is good to mention that this is at the very end of the race. You can see that his arms barely cross midline of the body. The arm swing itself is pretty symmetrical, however if you look closely, the right arm does slightly go more inward compared to the left. This might just be due to fatigue and breakdown of form, which is something to expect at the end of a marathon. Finally, let's look at the head. In this clip, his head seems to be slightly extended, however this might be due to him going uphill. If you look at him at the end of the race, where the course is more flat, he seems to present with more of a neutral head position. And that's it for the quick analysis on Lawrence Chirono. I definitely enjoyed taking a look at the way he ran. I'm really excited to see what he will continue to accomplish. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Let me know which one you'd like me to analyze next. And as always, thank you for watching.